Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department of the Colorado School of Mines. My name is Eric. And I'm Nicole. So far we've talked about different ways of visualizing crystal structures, but now we want to develop a way to label different families of planes. We'll call the labeling notation Miller indices. While this may seem underwhelming, bear with us as this will become extremely useful in experimental applications such as diffraction and thin film growth. It's important to note that before we even talk about Miller indices for a crystal, we'll invoke that we know which Bravais lattice our crystal has. For example, for the same index numbers, planes of a cubic lattice would be different than those planes associated with a hexagonal lattice. So with that in mind, Nicole, why don't you start by drawing a simple cubic unit cell? Easy enough. Now I'm going to draw in a plane that intersects with this unit cell like yay. First, we need to start by labeling where the plane intersects each lattice vector. Looks like it intersects at 1a1, 1a2, and 1a3. Indeed they do. Now we'll take those numbers and invert them. The three numbers are referred to as the h, k, and l values of the plane. Our result is the Miller indices of this plane, so this would be called the 111 plane. That was a bit too easy. How about I try this plane here? It intersects at 2a1, 1a2, and 1a3. Taking the reciprocal of each gives us 1 half, 1, and 1. So this would be the 1 half, 1, 1 plane. You're almost right. We want everything to be an integer. Thus, we'll scale everything to the smallest integer and label this plane as the 1, 2, 2 plane. Could we then have a 2, 4, 4 plane? Absolutely. That's why when we talk about Miller indices, we usually talk about labeling families of planes rather than unique planes. But what if we have a plane like this, where it never crosses an intercept like this one? Would we just treat that intercept as infinity, and when we take the reciprocal of 1 infinity 1, we'd get the 1, 0, 1 plane? We said earlier that planes in different crystal structures would look different. To illustrate this, let's look at a hexagonal lattice with lattice vectors a1, a2, and a3 as so. Using intercepts at 1a1, 1a2, and 1a3, we can reconstruct the 111 plane, which looks considerably different from the cubic 111 plane. Because Miller indices only depend on lattice vectors, we can also note that the crystal planes are independent of any centering or basis. Before we wrap up, let me point out how to show planes in Vesta. Here, we load in a cell. Then we click Edit Lattice Planes. Create a new one and assign the HKL values you want. So the angle looks right, but the intercept seems odd. Yeah, Vesta's a bit silly, but we can set whatever value we want. Setting it to D equals 1 is probably a good start. We can add other planes too. Earlier we talked about facets. Can we visualize those too? Oh, behold the power of Vesta. We'll go under Edit, Edit Data, Crystal Shape. Let's start with something simple. A cubic crystal with 100 faces. We can see that the underlying atoms inside this crystal. If you want to change the color of the crystal, you've got to change the checkbox down here to custom color. Ooh, shiny. So we could change the boundary to let me see which atoms are at the surface. And here we go. It's rare for a crystal to have just one low energy face. Let's add a 111 face that truncates this cube. Once again, we can see what atoms are at the surface. This sort of information is pretty important for thin film growth, since you want to know what atoms are exposed at your surface. And with that, we've wrapped up Miller indices. Thanks for watching Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. See you next time!